All right, welcome everybody um, to this year's Connect event. It's uh, lovely to see you all here. And um, let me start by briefly introducing myself and uh, what this day gonna be like. And then I'll turn it over to Florian Koich to introduce our panelists and uh, guide us through the rest of the day. Um, my name is Frauke Kreutler. I'm, uh, I guess, jointly with Florian Koich, um, still in a director function for the International Program in Survey and Data Science, one of the uh, organizations that um, set up this event. Um, I'm now uh, at the University of Munich, LMU, um, as well as the University of Maryland, but until recently um, was a professor at the University of Mannheim and uh, built this program together with Florian. When I say this program, let me introduce what that is. It's a collaboration between uh, the University of Mannheim, the joint program in survey methodology at the University of Maryland, um, the Social Data Science Center at the University of Maryland and the Mannheim Business School. Um, we have jointly uh, for the last, feels like four years, five years now, always um, done once a year, a big uh, event where we, um, where we uh, introduce faculty, where we um, talk to our students directly to get them started, where we hope there's a lot of networking. And when that event happens in person, that usually worked. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging in the online version, but it also allowed us to reach even more people and expose them to the great speakers we have. Um, this said, a brief view at the agenda. Um, after I'm done with my introductory re remarks, we'll have a career panel, and I'm sure that's where most of you here, not to hear me talk, um, with Gina Valenko from Google, Elizabeth Stewart from Johns Hopkins University, and Elizabeth Linek from the European Center for Information and Communication Technologies. After a short break, uh, we'll hear a keynote talk from um, Liz. And, uh, and following another break, we'll have a panel with um, faculty from the University of Mannheim and uh, faculty from Hopkins. And uh, Actually, that is a typo, I just realized. Uh, it's not faculty from Hopkins in the commentary, um, but we'll, we'll fix that when it comes to the break. Um, uh, Silvia knopfler Wesewick and Markus Stromer both will um, provide commentaries uh, to the panel in the afternoon. So this is the day. I hope you can join most of it. And if not, uh, maybe some participants will tweet out the nuggets and you can follow that way. Um, Briefly, I don't want to miss the opportunity to tell you about the International Program in Survey and Data Science and what that is about. Uh, many of you, well, probably all of you know what surveys are and certainly know what data science is. This uh, combination of the two data sources or approaches on using data um, is still rather novel and uh, to my knowledge uh, propagated only currently uh, at three places, the University of Maryland, the University of Michigan, and now the University of Mannheim, uh, with programs that are entitled that way, or that have the, the, both keywords in the title and are dedicated to um, basically the analysis of um, data from various different sources. Um, I already mentioned some of the partner universities. Um, our faculty is truly international in this program, and I will explain the structure in a bit and why um, we, it is possible to have so many different faculty. We started out with a, a grant from the German Ministry of um, Research, um, yeah, uh, Education and Science, I guess, if we translate that on the fly, um, uh, to build up an international network of faculty to teach in a space that requires some specialized skills uh, that are hard to find with one single faculty at one single university, right? Think of details of survey sampling, you know, there's always way more open position posted than people with those skills. Um, but the same would be true for um, modern machine learning techniques using your favorite social media outlet. Uh, so here we, you, you see a, um, a number of universities that we draw um, on with our faculty. 
Um, but also we wanted, since this program is a program dedicated to teach working professionals, um, we uh, partner heavily with uh, private sector companies and draw uh, faculty from those, uh, some of them alumni from our regular PhD programs. Um, and uh, they, they kindly stayed uh, connected and um, provide their knowledge and the application knowledge into the program. Not all private sector, as you mentioned, I should highlight the Deutsche Bundesbank, for example, Stefan Bender, one of our faculty members, uh, is with the Deutsche Bundesbank. And uh, he, as well as folks from uh, the national statistical offices, sort of bring a different perspective um, to this, but also the need because they know that the folks they have um, are very much uh, interested in expanding their skill sets uh, in this direction. And unlike uh, private sector companies, it's a little harder usually for uh, government agencies to quickly hire new staff or ramp up when new skills come around. So we were very much motivated by uh, the continuing education needs of these organizations when we built this program. Um, I already alluded to this combination of survey and data science. Um, what we mean with that is that we very much hope that folks that take our courses or end the entire program, um, that they are capable of using all different data sources, whether they have been designed to answer a certain research question, such as experiments, UGR, we will hear some more about this in Liz's keynote uh, later on, or uh, whether they are observational data collected via surveys or traces of observations, say, um, through uh, digital records uh, of administrative processes, right? Um, all those have a specific purpose in mind and uh, are more or less designed to answer a research question. That is not true for data that sort of happened in the wild, <laughs> that we increasingly are able to capture through uh, digital traces and devices. And um, some refer to these as organic data or found data. Um, after several years of trying to create useful insights out of those sources, um, I think we all as a community realize that there are a lot of skills needed. So, you know, the amount of work that in the design space goes into planning an experiment and planning a survey uh, with the found data often goes in uh, massaging and processing the data afterwards um, in, in order to uh, make good use of them. So it's, um, they might come cheap at the beginning, but certainly have large expenses sort of on the, on the other side when we try to make use of them. When I talk about digital traces, I don't just mean the ones uh, listed on the slide before, um, but if you sort of think of that space uh, or that continuum of behavior that is still fully analog and entirely digital, although after a year of COVID, uh, home office uh, settings, pretty much everything moved to the left side. So this uh, picture might be helplessly outdated. Um, but it's certainly, you know, in pre-corona times, you know, this was our attempt to place the various individual and uh, social behaviors on this scale. And um, I think it's fair to say that increasingly with the development of technology, we will have digital traces of both individual and social behavior um, or at least partial traces. With this program though, um, with its strong rooting in survey methodology always has in mind is who are the populations that we capture? Do we have everything or is one single data source enough? And uh, you know, our flagship standard example uh, to this date for using organic or digital traces on the web data um, is Roberto Rigon's Bond's uh, price index. Um, way back when, it feels like <laughs> decades ago, we can soon say, uh, Roberto was not pleased with uh, some Latin American countries way of reporting inflation indices and thought, well, I do know that the online goods uh, do not, or the prices for online goods uh, do not necessarily re reflect all prices of online and offline goods, but the relative changes of prices in online goods over time should give us a good signal of um, price changes and therefore be a good source for uh, creating inflation indices maybe faster than we can with traditional survey methods. 
if you look at the methodology of this project, you will quickly see that he is, or this uh, you know, entire group is using both online and offline data in that sense that they get the prices scraped or uh, in partnership with companies from the companies directly online. Um, but the basket of goods, with, you don't need to update necessarily uh, at the same frequency as the prices comes from uh, surveys done in a more traditional way. In order to make uh, good decisions and have high quality price indices or any other indices for that matter, um, it is important uh, to have good data. And so our courses, or if you look at the entire program, has a strong focus on the data collection process itself, either to understand it and see if it's fit for the purpose that the data are intended to be used, or to really uh, contribute and improve the data generating and data creation process and design measurements that uh, do measure the intended. And uh, I, I feel like all of this <laughs> gained even more relevance in the last year when we all were scrambling to very quickly um, get good data on uh, the development of the pandemic. I think last year this summer I was mentioning already uh, that need in a couple of projects that we started uh, to that effect and um, the work hasn't stopped since. But of course, you know, the more traditional pieces of data science, such as data management, uh, linking various databases and records, using APIs, uh, applying analytic techniques um, is very much uh, on our mind when we think of uh, content we want to make available for these continuing education offerings. Um, and the same is true for um, uh, communication, uh, visualization and dissemination. And you know, this here being part of the dissemination efforts. I can only say from my experience with the COVID work that one cannot uh, do enough of that. You know, it's always amazing how slowly uh, the information on available data penetrates um, and, and how important it is to do this outreach. People trained in this program we've seen uh, fly off the shelf, uh, and, and maybe not just this program, but the sister programs in Michigan and Maryland as well. Um, and you can see here a couple of job postings um, where this combination of skills is explicitly mentioned. And so for anyone interested in changing careers, that might be uh, something to consider. The uh, participants profile, uh, don't need to say too much, except that we really encourage all uh, diversity here and uh, certainly all age ranges. And uh, just briefly, I don't need to explain much after a year of online learning, but uh, this program too, all courses always have been online. There's like five years of research on how to do that while well going into them. So we can, uh, I think, confidently assure you that uh, we, we worked out the um, the early starting problems uh, a long time ago. And so, so we're mixing here small virtual classrooms that are um, done live with uh, asynchronous elements, uh, online lectures that uh, students watch ahead of time and uh, online discussion forums prior to uh, the weekly hour interaction with the instructor. Uh, one of our instructors you see here, Thomas Fetzer, he uh, will be in the afternoon um, panel. And um, I kept saying the program without telling you what that actually means. By now we have a master program, which is what we started out with, um, a series of certificates that are bundles of several courses, but also uh, now most recently added the possibility to take any of this course, these courses as single courses. Um, for those of you who are intrigued or say it's like, well, I know pretty much everything except for how to draw good samples or how to um, weigh my survey data, then I, now there's a good opportunity to just take these individual courses and they're still of the same uh, master level quality. Uh, here's an example of some upcoming courses for this fall. Um, you see the diversity, not just in uh, instructors and their uh, backgrounds, but also in topics. And uh, to my knowledge, we, with the exception maybe of one course, we have still space, uh, at least a few seats uh, in all of them. So be in touch um, if that is of interest to you in terms of single courses or um, the upcoming certificates. The cycle for 
the master program is a bit longer, but um, all of these questions uh, you can get answered from uh, our team here at IPSDS. Um, when we meet in person, we would do that uh, directly uh, online. We'll have a little bit of time at the very end to do that. Um, and in the meantime, you can email uh, Manon Pfeiffer at Pfeiffer, sorry, at <laughs> via the email address Pfeiffer at Mannheim Business School. Um, the Mannheim Business School is uh, sort of a close partner tie uh, subsidiary, if you will, from the University of Mannheim and uh, Mannheim's way to provide continuing education to the world. So with that, uh, thank you for allowing me this quick introduction here. And I think Florian, I'm a little bit over time. Those are the three minutes we waited at the beginning, but I'm handing it over to you now.